What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we had another AB game where we chose to ally. And in this case, everybody chose to ally, and so Luna is incredibly happy. This is incredible. However, the music is a little bit off-putting. It makes me see it makes it seem like there's going to be some sort of lurking negative outcome. Look, everyone voted ally. You did just like you promised, Kay. How could I choose to betray after what Fai said to me? Tenmyoji and Dio voted ally too. Yeah, that's that's what I'm most curious about. Of course. If we hadn't, Alice would have died. Yeah, well, that's about it, I guess. We should thank the both of you as well. I'm happy to see you also chose Ally. Oh, I didn't have anything to do with it. That was all Sigma. I can't help but feel like there's some lurking darkness behind Luna's happy facade. Right? Like... Is there a reason for her always deferring the decision? Does she not want to reveal that maybe she's inclined to click betray or or something like that? I don't know. Then thank you very much, Sigma. Although in the very first AB game, she had to chose she had to have chosen ally because she was a single, right? Sigma? Sigma? Sigma, Sigma are you alright? Wait, what? Come on, what's wrong? Just say something. Huh? Oh, yeah, um... Looks like we all allied. That's great? Sigma? What the heck's wrong with you? Yeah, what is going on with Sigma right now? Yeah, you've been acting a little out of it ever since we came out of the AB rooms. You've got this, this weird white stuff coming out of your hand. What happened? You make a pass at Luna and get shot down? No, nothing like that. Hey man, it was a joke. You remember what that is? A joke? You're in pretty bad shape, huh? Before Dio could continue, the heavy metal rumble of doors shutting echoed throughout the warehouse. All right, and now what? Ambidex gate ga heisa saremashita. The Ambidex gates have closed. Ambidex game, daisan round wa hoshi no kai desu. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Gate wa hoshi no mark ga shiru sareta card key niori kaijou saremasu. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. Ah, so this is basically the game saying, even though this is technically the third set of keys, it doesn't have to be the third or, or the final Ambidex game round, right? You can reuse the star keys to set another Ambidex game. The Ambidex gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them, which is nice. We can open the gates as many times as we want to. Then that means... We can play the AB game as many times as we like. Right? Hey, Zero Jr. said something about this, didn't he? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The parent solo assignments hop around a bit too. Yeah. Right, sorry to be a pain, but could you all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all your colors and assignments are. Everyone nodded and held their arms out toward him. 
I stared at them, terrified to follow suit, but certain that refusing would only draw more suspicion. So I held my arm out, hand tightened into a white-knuckled fist to hide the cut. When their eyes landed on my hand, my heart skipped a beat. Huh. So Dio and K are a yellow pair. What an interesting pair. Dio keeps getting, well, Dio and Alice would be an interesting pair. Luna and I are both pairs, but our colors are different. So they are matched to one of, you know, Alice or uh, Quark or Clover? No, Clover's here, right? Right. You're a cyan, and I'm magenta. That makes Sigma the only solo, huh? A red solo. So what are the four we left in the infirmary? Luna and I are pairs, so two of them are our partners. That means the other two are solos. Although I guess we don't know what colors they are. They're probably green and blue. Why is that? Didn't you see them? There are a bunch of white doors in the floor B warehouse. They have to be the next set of chromatic doors. Ah, uh, yes. Fine, I saw them as well. On our way back from the garden with the unconscious quark, there they were. Each one had a box just like the doors on floor A. Given that, I don't see how there can be any question. Those white doors are our next set of chromatic doors. I think that our bracelet combinations will have to add up to white in order to open the secondary doors. The pairs are cyan, magenta, and yellow. You see? If we need to make white, then the other three colors would have to be red, green, and blue. Right. Good. Now that we've got that figured out, I'm heading back to the infirmary for a bit. We should all go back and see what's happened. I want to check up on Quark and Alice. Ah, uh, it's not going to be good. I know, I just know it's not going to be good. I shall accompany you then. Might as well go with you, I guess. No real reason to hang out here. What will you do? I... I need to talk to Sigma about something. About what? Something. Ooh. Her usual pleasant expression had been replaced with something much more sullen. She must have noticed that there was something wrong with me. That was what she wanted to talk about. I was sure of it. Okay, fine. I managed to make my voice sound almost relaxed. Whoa, hold on, a private talk? What are you guys plotting? We're not plotting anything. I promise, it's nothing. Hm. Fine, whatever. Yeah, I mean you only have so much ability to really insist here. See if I care. Dio tossed his head with a mixture of arrogance and feigned disinterest, and marched out the yellow door. Tenmyo JNK quickly followed. In only moments, all three had disappeared. Ooh, I'm really curious to see how this conversation is going to go with Luna. 
So, uh, what was it that you wanted to talk about? I was almost certain I knew, but there was always hope. I did my best to act as if I was genuinely confused. Oh, um... I don't really like this room. Could we go somewhere else? I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Luna's gonna kill us. <laughs> what is going on? I'm so doubtful. I'm so skeptical of everyone. Luna could genuinely just not like this warehouse. I mean, it doesn't look like a pleasant room by any means. But I, w I certainly would be like, mm, why can't we just talk here? Um, okay. Good. I found somewhere nice when I was looking for Alice earlier. As strange as her request was, I had no reason to object. I kept my mouth shut and followed Luna as she headed off. Where are we going? Is it some completely new room? A place that she had found while looking for Alice that nobody else knows about? Oh, no, it's just the garden. <laughs> the garden. You know this place? Yes, well, sort of. I came here once when I was looking for Alice. Oh, I see. So, uh, what brings you here? This also confirms that Luna stopped by here when looking for Alice, which means she may be the one planting bombs, but... Isn't this nice? It's the only place in the whole facility with anything green. I feel kind of silly saying it, but it makes me think of the great outdoors. I think it's the perfect place for a serious conversation. Being surrounded by nature makes me feel happy. Oh, there's a bench over there. Would you like to sit down with me? She's totally driving this. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. She sat down softly and gently, and I lowered myself down next to her. So, what did you want to talk to me about? Instead of answering, Luna lifted the tiny birdcage pendant she wore into the palm of her hand. She was silent for a moment, and then began to talk. Can I tell you something? This is actually a music box. Really? Yes. She twisted the key on the bottom, and it made an almost imperceptible winding noise. When she released it, soft, clear notes drifted out. It's a nice song. Why'd you bring that up, though? Because I... Wanted you to know, I guess. I wanted you to know more about me. Maybe it's because I'm so shy, but I don't really have any friends. Or even any acquaintances, really. So I've always been alone. Aww. It was really hard. I felt so lonely a lot of the time. And it... it hurt. It felt like I was just going... kind of going to collapse from the inside out. Hmm. That was when I got this music box. Someone very important gave it to me. They didn't say anything, but I felt like there was an unspoken message behind it. Luna, happiness is closer than you think. Aw, what a sweet message. Do you know Materlinks, the blue bird? Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I know the gist of it. I think it starts on Christmas Eve. This brother and sister named Tiltle and Mittle? 
You get asked to find a bluebird by this old woman, and they travel to the dream world. Or something. Anyway, supposedly if you can catch this bird, then you can make a wish come true. So they visit all these different places, but they can't find it. Eventually they give up and go home, but when they wake up, the bird is in a bird cage in their hut. That's right. It's a well-known story. And it teaches a simple lesson. Yeah, like you said, happiness is closer than you think. Right. It got me thinking. Maybe the person who gave me this music box was trying to tell me just that. I don't know if that's true. Maybe all of this is just in my head, but... I really felt like that was what they meant. It was so kind. And I kept it with me all the time, like a kind of good luck charm. But... One day I realized something. There was another meaning to the bluebird. In Materlink's original story, it doesn't end with them waking up. There's more? Yes. When Tiltle and Middle try to feed the bird, it leaves the cage and flies away. And then the story ends. Whoa. What about the moral then? It changes. Now the message is that just when you think you've found happiness, you'll lose it again. Well, that's a little bit darker. I thought about that for a while. But in the end, it didn't change how I felt. I don't know what they intended it to mean when they gave it to me. But I decided how I was going to look at it. It means that happiness is something you should always be looking for. And it's only when you're pursuing happiness that you're truly happy. Wow. It's deep. You know, Sigma? I think you might be Tiltal. What? You know, the boy who the old lady asked to find the bluebird on Christmas Eve? What are you trying to say? Can I ask you something? Um, sure. Where did you find Alice? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. Where did you find Alice? Room 2, in the crew quarters. Where were you before that? I was in the lounge. That was after we'd split up to go look for Alice. The first place I went was the lounge. So you went from the lounge to the crew quarters where you found Alice. And then you rushed her to the infirmary, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me this then. 
このビオトープのことをご存知だったのでしょう。How do you know about the garden? <laughs> That's a great point, right? Just now, you said you'd come here when you were looking for Alice. Didn't you? That doesn't make any sense. There wouldn't have been any time for you to visit the garden while you were looking for Alice. So tell me, Sigma. How do you know about this place? Well, um, I didn't know what to say. I couldn't even explain it to myself. Why had I told her I knew about the garden? Why had I told her I'd been there before? Sigma. Are you. Are you a robot? Have you always been here? Uh, what? See. It would make so much sense if you were. That would explain why you knew about the garden, and. And it would explain that cut on your left hand. Darn, so you did see it, huh? Yes. I've been told that robots these days have what's called artificial biological tissue, or ABT, on top of a metal skeleton. It makes them look almost exactly like a human. And ABT uses this white liquid instead of blood. Well, geez. For some reason, when Luna had called me a robot, it hadn't really phased me. Maybe because it was just so out there? It didn't sound like a real possibility. It sounded more like a theory you'd get from someone in a nut house. Still, my hand was still oozing white liquid. Was I really a robot? No. That was impossible. I needed to stop doing that. I questioned myself so much was giving my heart palpitations. Luna, aren't you a little scared? Scared? Why would I be scared? Well, let's say I am a robot. That means there's a pretty good chance Zero's pulling my strings. And that would make me your enemy. Oh, I guess so. Well, even if you were, I wouldn't be scared. Why not? Hmm. Maybe because you're a robot. Huh? Have you ever heard of the three laws of robotics? I have heard of the three laws. They were a set of rules created by the science fiction author Isaac Asimov that he used in several of his stories. Rule 1. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Rule 2. A robot must obey any orders given to it by human beings except when such orders would conflict with the first law. Rule 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. What is in the background? Is this a premonition or something? This looks like the construction of the types of robots that Luna had mentioned before. Why are we seeing that? Oh yeah, I've heard that. I've heard those before. That's just an ideal though. You could work toward that, but I don't think you would ever actually achieve it. I mean, depending on how you program them, robots could do pretty much whatever they wanted to. Yes, you're right. But I believe in them. In you. However you're programmed. I don't think you'd break any of those three laws. 
三原則のないロボットなんてただの鉄の塊にすぎませんロボットの三原則は全部のメタルやシグマさんはそうじゃないあなたには心がある You have a heart. You're a good person. It's in your eyes. Well, I guess I'm just kind of assuming you're a robot. There's still a chance you're not. We should run some tests. Tests? Yes. Um, how? Well, the atom should be able to tell us. Oh, yeah. That thing in the infirmary. I heard the crunch of dried leaves behind us. But when I turned, there was nothing. Who is it? Is, is someone there? I do want to say, un unless, again, of course, there's that 1% that Luna has an ulterior motive, Luna's. Calming presence is so appreciated in this context, right? Can we talk about how expertly she approached Sigma about something so sensitive and potentially confrontational, right? She thinks that she's maybe talking to slash working with a robot who could be getting manipulated by Zero, her captivator, right? Um, that's a pretty tense situation, and being accused of being a robot that has such implications could be something that would really spur a, a strong defensive response, right? A reaction to oppose that. And Luna very strategically brought it up in a way that makes Sigma not feel threatened in this situation and, and instead feel like he's gained an ally and somebody who wants to also answer the same questions, right? Luna was very understanding of Sigma's own fear, even though they didn't directly address how Sigma's feeling about it. Very impressive. But anyways, who is here? Just me. Fine. Sorry, but can you guys come over here? I need you to see something. Luna and I looked at one another, shrugged, and stepped into the bush into the bushes. Is it gonna be the bomb again? Welcome. What? How long have you been here? I just got here a little while ago. Not that we know that for sure. Did you hear what we were saying? No. Were you talking about something you didn't want me to know about? Whatever. Just have a look at this. I followed the line of her finger. Yep, there it is again. Crap! This... this is... An antimatter bomb. Exactly. I'm pretty sure someone didn't move it here from the crew quarters. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's an entirely different bomb. Look at the number. Yeah, so this is kind of following the same structure, it's just different because, well, Luna's here too. It says 01. And, of course, we didn't find Alice here. And the one in the crew quarters said 03, right? Then that must mean... Oh, so interesting. Fi found this bomb. Did she find it earlier? When looking for Alice, maybe? But Alice didn't end up here. So it's not quite the same. Crap. Then there's no question, huh? I've got more good news. Yep, just think about the numbers for a moment. You're saying there's a 02 bomb out there somewhere? I can't be sure. But it does seem pretty likely. Darn. That means we're dealing with a com with a combined explosive power equal to three tons of TNT. Yeah. Who planted them? Was it you guys? I mean, you've been in here quite a while. Hey, don't give me that. You're way more suspicious than we are. What were you doing in the bushes anyway? Ah, classic whataboutism, right? <laughs> well, uh... I was taking a walk. I mean, Phi is understandably suspicious. But claiming Phi is suspicious doesn't make Sigma any less suspicious. Taking a walk? 
You really think I'm gonna buy that? Fine. You got me. I heard you two were off talking in secret. So I got curious and went back to the Flore warehouse. Of course, you weren't there. That seemed pretty suspicious to me, so I headed here. Reasonable. And just as I'd suspected, there you were, talking on the bench. I snuck up from behind so you wouldn't notice me. Then, just as I was getting close enough to hear, I found the bomb. So? Believe me now? A little bit more than before, but maybe not 100%. So, who planted the bomb? Honestly, it could have been any one of us. Anybody could have come here while we were all looking for Alice. We need to tell everyone about this then. Yeah, you're right. Let's head back to the infirmary. I'm also curious to see what the, the bracelet setups are for Phi, Alice, Quark, Clover. Everyone else was already there when we arrived. Clover and Temyoji. K and Dio. And of course, Alice and Quark. Both seem to be sleeping peacefully. You never think to look at them that <laughs> that they'd been completely insane not so long ago. All right, everybody, listen up. I told them how we'd found the number one bomb in the garden, and how, judging by the numbering on the two bombs we'd found so far, there was probably a number two bomb out there somewhere too. This is bad. What are we going to do? Well, I think Alice mentioned something. There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. You see it, right here. That's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. And I believe we found that in, in the control room. Then we can enter the password. So if we have the password, we can deactivate them? Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That's great and all, but we need that password input device she was talking about. Without that, we're still boned even if we did have the password. Yeah. That's why I want all of you to let me search you. I beg your pardon? A body check. You heard me. Chances are, whoever planted those bombs is in this room. There's also a good chance they've also got the device we need to deactivate the bombs. So you're planning to search us for it? Exactly. But... No buts. If you refuse, then I'll assume it's because you've got it, and you planted the bombs. Unless you want that, I suggest you cooperate. I mean, it's not like there's much to search in Clover's attire. <laughs> Clear? Good. Now, who's going to be first? Hmm. I would bet it's Sigma. Wait, 
Huh? You only need to search one person. What? Why? Because I figured out who did it. Is it... Is it Alice or Quark? Hmm. I... I know who did it. The words were out of my mouth before I'd even realized I was saying them. How can you... There's no way. Yeah. I met Fai's gaze and nodded, then turned away. I know who sent the bombs. That person... What the heck? Oh my goodness. Look at this assertive finger pointing. This reminds me of Danganronpa. That person. You did it. The room was suddenly silent. Are we supposed to know at this point? Or is it going to be uh, to be continued, right? Because we don't have enough information yet. Can I deduce what it is right now? Mm, I mean, there's nothing that seems glaringly obvious. I feel like this is based on a premonition. More than anything else. Hmm. I would bet it's one of D.O.K. or Temyoji. Maybe Dio? Yeah, maybe Dio. In the crew quarters, initially it was Kay and Quark, I believe, who found the bomb. In this timeline, Clover found the bomb and was alarmed. In both timelines, the second bomb was found by Phi. It couldn't be Alice or Quark while all of that stuff was going on. Temyoji, I can't 100% certain say, but probably not, maybe? <laughs> um, hmm, we'll see. It is a to be continued. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm not too surprised by that one, but that's that's exciting. That is actually really exciting. Alright, so we'll save. And we'll look at the flowchart. Ooh, so that's that's a juicy ending. And <laughs> that's a really juicy ending. What I'm curious about is these other ones over here. Where I was say now how do we stop Phi? I don't Remember, I don't think I would have the information for that, but apparently I do. There's also something, what, to the left? Yeah, this way. Where did Alice go? We did this one, okay. Can I zoom out, please? I guess not. We can go to this one. We chose to ally, but Phi betrayed us, and then she jumped over us. How can we stop her? I'm not sure, but I think we have enough time to give it a look. Mm, I don't know. I feel like I should know what information we can use to actually stop Phi. Maybe the anesthetic, the same way that they stopped Sigma in a different timeline? Maybe that's the information we need? I'm not really sure. But I'm actually a little bit lower energy today, so I think we're, I'm going to say that in the next episode, we're going to find out ex just exactly what we can do to stop Phi in this other timeline. We obviously are going to figure out the puzzle of who is placing these bombs. It's somebody in that infirmary room, which is good to know, um, which means it's obviously one of us. So we'll find out about that. And then we've explored a lot of what this branch has to offer, so... We'll be going back to really the very beginning again for our next set of timelines, which is very exciting because we've really stayed within our local branch of all the stuff going on with Quark and Alice after pairing up with Alice the first time around. And I'm curious to see how much things can diverge depending on that very first round because it seems like quite a bit. But I hope you guys are excited uh, to see whatever that holds. Um, but of course, that won't be happening until the next episode. But until the next episode... 
Zero Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. Bye.